then again, I think it all goes back around to that question that, that you posed, right? What is success? Um, yeah, dope conversation, y'all. We, we're going to go to the next question that was provided by IMI real quick. Uh, the next question is, if you could make one change to the educational experience of the Black community, what would it be? And we're going to start off with Ms. Rachel on this one. You know, I think I would just say having more of a community. And so, it, and again, if we, I guess I'm speaking as if we're talking about in a formal education setting, but I would just say having a Black community, period. Because <laughs> I went to a PWI for um, for both my, my bachelor's and my master's. And in most of my classes, you know, I might have been one of two of, you know, one of five. And, um, and it wasn't until one of the first positions that I had outside of college, I was the liaison for the, my, one of my alma maters and their, uh, their black alumni association. And that was, and I realized that my experience wasn't unique. You know, a lot of people would come to our events and were like, wow, I can't believe this many black people went here. <laughs> you know, I, I never saw them around on campus. And I think that um, for the students who do, you know, link up and are a part of communities, um, and I'm talking especially of those who go to, to predominantly white institutions, but I think um, just being able to link up with your community and talk to and vent and talk through situations with people who are likely experiencing some of the same challenges that you are would increase the retention and, and the likelihood uh, that you will push through because you know, um, it might be easier for some of us than others, but I, I like to think that I'm not too far <laughs> removed from um, from my years in college. And the truth is, when, when you're in college, you know, most students aren't thinking about as deeply um, as we are in this conversation. You know, they try, they just trying to have a good time. Um, you know, they, they don't want to do anything that's quote unquote boring. They want to be accepted and feel community among their friends. And so I'll even connect this to Sinclair's um, comment about um, the, some of the challenges that we see with black and also female uh, representation in the, um, in the STEM uh, degree programs. I think part of that is because you really got to be, you know, an individual to, to stick through that because we're socialized in so many ways not to pursue those career paths and they're, and they're not easy. And, and when things get tough, if a lot of your peers aren't following a, a similar path, I think you're just less likely um, to, to, to push through it. And I think as adults, we have the tendency to kind of stick our nose up and, and, and say like, well, they just need to be independent and, you know, push past, you know, their peers and what, and what they're doing. But when most of us look back and see how we operated back then, a lot of us were driven by, you know, what the people within our arms re reached the closest four to five people, what they, what they were doing. And so, um, so, you know, it, to circle it all back to the answer to that question, if I can make one change, it would, it would be finding a, a, a truly effective ways of creating community among black students in the college setting, because there are sometimes there there's resources and groups, but but really finding effective ways to draw the students in, it, it can be a challenge um, uh, for some of us. So the intentional establishment of black community on those campuses will yield way more effective results for our students. Community is big. Oh, oh I think that's Ms. DJ. Okay. Yes, it is. It's, it's huge. It's huge. You know, we're a communal people by nature and we thrive off of that collaborative nature. Um, and I, I think I couldn't have said it any better, Ms. Rachel. Thank you for, for sharing that insight. Mr. Josiah, do you want to uh, hop in here? Any thoughts, any suggestions? Uh, yeah, I think for me, um, you know, I'm big on, on representation. You know what I mean? And, and I don't mean just at the HBCUs. You know, but I mean representation at every university, and I, I wish there was more of us, you know what I mean, and not just more of us as students, but more of us as faculty, more as a, of us as staff, more of us as administration, um, because, you know, like, um, you know, Queen Nikki was talking about earlier with her child, you know what I mean, what I, I strongly believe that that wouldn't have happened if they had more Black, you know, teachers, you know what I mean? 
people who have dealt more with black children, you know, who know, cause you know, I I've had, there's been times where I've stopped little kids that I didn't even know from fighting. You know what I mean? I'm like, Hey, Hey, y'all, y'all, no, nah, that's not cool. Hey, you go that way. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'll talk to both of them in different ways. Hey, listen, don't you ever let nobody put their hands on you. And this person, hey, don't ever put your hands on nobody. You know what I mean? There's a different way to be able to approach it. So for me, I just, I personally just wish there was more representation. I wish we had the luxury of walking into a classroom and knowing that all eyes are going to, aren't going to be on you. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you know that you're one of two or one of three or one you know what I mean? And, and, and feeling like when, whenever there's an issue about black people, you're the delegate for the all black people, or you have to be the spokesperson for all black people. Um, so for me, I think that if there was just one thing I could change, it would be, um, you know, having more representation. I, I wish that people, we had the luxury to, to have to, to have to choose between, do we want to go with the snotty nose black teacher, or do we want to go with the cool black teacher, or do we want to go with the, you know, the terrible black teacher, do we want to go with the, no, I like this black teacher because of the way he dresses, I want to be, like, do we, I wish we had that luxury, but we don't, and in reality, we just say, I want to go with the black teacher, where's the black teacher at, I don't care what they teach, I need to be in that classroom, you know what I'm saying, and so, uh, for me, and I, I think that we're seeing the, you know, the, the effects of that, um, of not having so many options and not, I'm not having options. I think our children are seeing the effects of it. You know, our children are saying, listen, I've been suspended from school since I was a kid, starting at, you know, first grade, you know what I mean? Or fifth grade or second grade. And every year I've been suspended or getting in trouble. You know, this is not a place where I'm welcomed. But I see every time I look at entertainment, every time I look at a movie, Michael B. Jordan, or every time I look at, you know, music, you got, you know, Jay-Z and Lil Wayne and all these other people and Lil Boosie or whoever. Every time I look at, you know, heck, uh, you know, a, a television show or whatever it is that regards to entertainment, basketball, football, they're accepted there. They're, in fact, they're expected to be there. It's not just they're accepted. They're expected to be there and they're expected to be great. Whereas in education, they're just expected to show up and deal with whatever happens to them. Um, so for me, I'm big on representation and because I feel like, you know, there were certain things that I was, uh, you know, that I missed out on because I didn't have uh, those opportunities to talk to a black male teacher and explain to them why I feel like I don't feel, you know, like, like education is a place for me. I don't feel like a classroom is a place for me um, because the way that I talk is not the way that most people in a classroom would deem appropriate. It's not the way that most people from a professional environment would deem appropriate. But I'm still in those meetings now and I'm not changing the way I talk. I talk the same exact way and what that let me know that what a teacher was trying to tell me was the right way 20 years ago was not the right way, it was your way. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's just not how I talk. I, I, it, it takes me back to, um, you know, this, this, the lyrics, and I always quote this from Nipsey Hussle, where he says, no, he a genius, but they can't, no, he a genius, but he can't, uh, he can't save him because they, no, he a genius, but he can't say it because they left him no platform to explain it. You know what I'm saying? Like the things that I know, I knew it before I got my degree, but I just didn't know how to articulate that information to y'all because y'all don't know what it's like to be me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I already knew about socialization as a child. So if, if, if I would have had people who look like me, who understand where I come from, listen to that, they would have said, yo, this kid's a genius. This kid's thinking about sociology in the third grade. This kid's questioning, you know, the power dynamic in the fourth grade. That's, that's so dope. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to saying, no, sit down and shut up because I told you to write this, this, this piece of paper. I told you to write this essay, or I told you that that's what you need to do. So representation to me is the most, I, I probably have to talk too long, but that, yeah, representation is where I, I think is, <laughs> it, it needs to be changed. Never need to apologize, Can You dropping bars, man. And uh, I, I, I want to, you know, kind of continue that that notion of representation, right? And not that that tokenization, right? But like authentic representation of who we are and the need to have, you know, black men and women from all walks of life in that space, right? And not just one that fits your mold that you're comfortable with as, you know, the Eurocentric standard that you're comfortable with, right? Because oftentimes that's, that's something that I, I run into when I'm talking to students is they might have that one, you know, black faculty or administrator but they don't really rock with them, you know what I'm saying? And we need more people 
who can identify with these students and talk their language, you know what I'm saying? And have may not have come from the exact same background, but at least have that willingness to sit down and listen to them. Um, because oftentimes our students aren't listened to, right? If you actually listen to them, they'll tell you what's going on. They'll tell you how they need to be taught. They'll tell you, you know, but they get silenced so much. Like you said, you know, when you think about a first or second grader, black student, you know, often lively, you know, want to engage, want to experience everything. And by the time they get to, you know, the 10th grade, 11th grade, they're usually in the back of the class, silent, you know, don't want to talk because they've been indoctrinated to not be acknowledged for who they are and how they show up in the classroom. And so, yeah, this is a, this is powerful, man. Is, is there a, anything that anybody else, um, Devon or Ms. Nikki or anybody want to contribute to this point before we go on? Okay, we got a couple of more minutes here, but I'm gonna I'm bring up this next one uh, for, for the panelists. How does your company, are you as a person, help to improve the educational experience of the black community? All right, and then I'm gonna let uh, Ms. Ms. Rachel, if you wanna take that one from the top. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm glad that this question was embedded in there because I, I, um, I get so excited about trap wars in, in our game nights that too many people don't know about a whole separate leg of our business, um, and that is facilitating educational programming. And so, um, and so we partner with educational institutions, with community, um, with, with community uh, partners, and we host educational experiences on topics related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and in mental health and, and wellness, um, and even Black history and um, you know, and, I, and I'll share this, something that was mind blowing to me that I learned earlier this year, but, but did you all know that, that suicide is the second leading killer of young black people ages 10 to 24? It, I, it, and, and I, it probably like catches my breath every time I hear that, because, you know, to, I, I just think about, I mean, for anybody who is over the age of, of 24 participating in this today, like, I, you know, I feel like I didn't even start living my life <laughs> for real and, and, and offering fully what I had to offer to the world until, you know, I was beyond that. And so I just think that that's such a loss, you know, to our, to, to the Black community, but not just the Black community, to the world at large, that we're losing so many young Black lives uh, for that reason. And so all, you know, keeping, keeping that, that, that harsh, that scary, that that dark st statistic um, top of mind, the programs that, that we are creating are revolved around helping students to find healthy ways to, to de-stress, pro productive ways to de-stress. Because you know how it is in college, you know, you're promoted to, to drink you know, you, and I shouldn't even say in college as an adult, you know, you're promoted to do things to, you know, eat comfort foods and drink, um, you know, to de-stress or all, all of these other things. But, um, you know, creating spaces where people can just vent, have real conversation to, you know, play a game, do something um, just to, to build community to help them and push and pass that. And, you know, I talked a lot about how, how we facilitate program programming or that I'm a part of diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations. And I think all too often when people hear that, that, um, you know, that heading, they think about educating um, people who are in power, white people about how to, um, you know, how to operate productively in the workspace with, with other cultures, particularly with black people. But, but that's a one-sided conversation. We should be having more conversations um, with each other and with our youth about how do we navigate it when navigate both the stress of it, but how do you handle it? Um, you know, even from a professional standpoint, when you're being discriminated against, when you're being stereotyped, when, um, when there is a, a unconscious bias when you know that you're experiencing what what can you do um you know so that there isn't retaliation um a, a against you and so um and so these are all conversations uh that, that we are having with the greater community but my favorite conversations are you know with the black community with the young uh black community with black student unions um you know and, and, and black student groups so that so that they can start get in this information early on and not have to learn from experience like like so many of us had to 
Beautiful. And Ms. Rachel, do you have some uh, some websites or, or links that you can drop in the chat so that the audience can uh, get more further in tune with what you do for your businesses? Absolutely. I'm putting it. I'm putting our company website um, in the the chat right now. Um, and I'll just put uh, basically you can find us at Fam Foolery on everything Facebook, Instagram, um, and you can even reach out to me directly uh, for disclosure, we are in the middle of a rebrand because because when I participate on panels like this, a follow up conversation is like you mentioned, you mentioned in the event that you guys do this and this and I didn't see it on your site. And I'm like, I know we working on it. Uh, <laughs> and so um, and so everything that we do you uh, on the education front is not completely listed um, on the site. But uh, but if you reach out to me, I do have a, um, a a packet, so to speak, that I can send out to you that highlights what we do and, and uh, topics that, that we are prepared to discuss. Most definitely, most definitely. Thank you, Ms. Rachel. Uh, Mr. Josiah, do you want to uh, share a little bit about what you do either with your company or as an individual to imp improve the educational experience of the Black community? Uh, yeah, so I think for me as an individual, um, I'll start there first and I can talk about what we do um, as, as a group or with my, my, um, with my group here of folks. But um, as an in individual, uh, for me, I'm, I'm advocating in the spaces that Black people are not in. Um, and I think that those, that's very, very important um, because there are people who are making decisions about our population who aren't from our population. They don't understand our population. Um, and it's important to, um, to advocate on behalf of, of us, because if we don't, then we put our whole, uh, 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 you know, next generation in jeopardy, you know, in, or in the hands of, of, of those who do not understand us, who do not know us. And so for me personally, like I so there are times where I'm the only black person, you know what I'm saying, you know, in the room that's asking questions that, um, other people just don't consider, you know what I mean? Um, you know, for an example, um, you know, working for a specific program, they, you know, I was asking, you know, when's the last time you all have been out to Stockton? Well, you know, they don't really just, you know, give us numbers like that. So we don't usually go to Stockton. I say, well, have you ever thought that the reason they don't send you people is because you don't go? Well, but you know, the numbers aren't that high. Well, again, that, but you know, if you look at the population of Stockton, California, it's mostly people like us, you know what I mean? So, or, or there's a high, you know, amount of people like us. I mean, I don't want to say mostly because I don't want to just generalize a whole city, but there's a high am amount of us there, you know what I mean? And so again, you know, these are questions that people wouldn't they wouldn't even ask because they don't know, um, you know, that. And it's like, well, hey, okay, the last time you did go there, did somebody who looked like them go or was it you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, of course they don't want to go. They, of course they don't want to go join you because they're saying that's not a place for me or a space where I'm welcome. And I've done this for the past 12 years and been in spaces where I'm not welcome. I'm not going to do that for college. I'm not going to pay to do that. So for me, um, just being able to advocate in those rooms um, and to give perspective. And, and again, for me, I, again, I tell them, you know, I'm from a low income background. I grew up low income. You know, I'm a first generation, you know, college graduate. Um, you know, uh, uh, I have a huge family. You know what I mean? Um, I have family members whose lives were taken from them. You know what I mean? Some siblings. And so I'm speaking from, uh, you know, I, I can't say that I'm speaking from the worst, worst, but I'm, I, I got a pretty idea, a pretty good idea of what it's like to come from the slums. You know what I'm saying? And so to be able to go from that and, and to be in these, in these meetings, I know that there are children every single day whose lives are being changed because of the questions that I'm able to ask and the information I'm able to bring. Um, so that's what I do. And then also uh, what my group, what FYB, what we do is, you know, we teach people, you know, our, our, our name is Fire Your Boss. You know what I'm saying? We teach people at the end of the day, you, your own boss, you don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't work for nobody. You can partner with people. You can collaborate with people, but you don't work for anybody. It's a lot easier to say I make $20 an hour than it is to say I sacrificed an hour of my life that I will never get back for $20. You know what I'm saying? 
And so what we teach people is we say, listen, when you go and you decide to sign a contract with someone, that is a partnership, that is a collaboration. And you still, at the end of the day, have the right to do what you choose. Now, there will be consequences, right? There will be some things that will happen there, there, no matter what, right? Cause and effect. There's going to be some things that are going to be changed. But at the end of the day, ultimately, it's your decision. And you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Um, you know, and, and I and I use my personal experience as an example. You know, when I go out and do these presentations to high schoolers, to college students, to uh, you know people who have been incarcerated, formerly incarcerated, um, you know, and I talk to them and I just tell them, you know, through my experience, through the, some of the challenges that I faced, you know, what the difference in opportunity is. You know, listen. You know, there, there, there are people who make this, make bad decisions and then need help getting out. And then there are also people who need help before they get ready to make a bad decision. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I, I choose to talk to both. Uh, um, and, and what we're doing is creating just a different perspective of life. I know Devon talked about it earlier that, you know, that, that mindset of, um, you know, Henry Ford, where it's like, you just be good at one thing. But that's not true. You know what I'm saying? We're not monolithic, man. You know what I'm saying? Like Black people, you could be good at so many different things at once. Why can't you be in the stock market while you're investing in real estate, while you're working for the government, while you, you know what I'm saying, like having a YouTube channel? Like, why can't you have all of that stuff at the same time? Why is it that, well, if I don't, I don't want to mess this up, so I can't do that. You know, when in reality, man, the more that you do, you know, the better you become. And, and the more, the more that you, the more valuable you become, because again, now they can't just tell you, well, you're only good for this one thing. You know, we, we do every week. I know we're partnering with, with you all um, this month. You know, every week we do what's called Wise Word Wednesdays, where we say, hey, listen, everybody has something that they've learned in life. That's a guarantee. Everybody, no matter what age you are, I don't care, care if you're two years old and you're 75 years old, everybody has learned something in life. Listen, take one lesson that you've learned and share it on social media right? And use the hashtag Wise Word Wednesday. You ain't got to do it every week. We do it every week as a team, but we just ask there, because there's somebody out there who's went through what you're going through or is going through what you went through or is about to go through what you went through and they need your advice, right? Your information. And they have no idea that you're going through that or that you've been through that unless you tell them. So we use that again as just a weekly inspiration. But for me, you know, my wise word Wednesdays, I know that Devon's been following for a while, you know, they've completely improved. You know what I'm saying? From It went from me just talking in my car, holding my phone up to now having a whole production uh, of, of it. And, and all that's done by myself. I shoot, the, I, I record it myself. I edit myself for all that. So when I go out to it, if there was a company who ever said, hey, Josiah, we like your idea of Wise Word Wednesday. You know, we want to we we work with you. Well, okay, well, now the price just went up because I don't need you. I've done it myself. You know, I've created the value here. So now, and that's because again, I didn't just say, well, I only want to do speaking. So get on the camera and get off. So for me, I just encourage, we, what FYB does is we encourage people to be your own boss, to remember that you're the most important person to you. Nobody's going to fight for you like yourself. Um, and so that's what we choose to, to focus on. Sorry, again, for talking for so long. <laughs> Take your time, bro. Take your time. And is there a way that the that the folks can get in touch with you and you know your business ventures? You want to share that in the chat? Yeah, so I'll go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at, at uh, Joe Spider underscore FYB, and I'll put it in the chat. And you can also follow our business pages, which is uh, underscore Fire Your Boss on Instagram. We don't have a website yet, um, but we're working on it. You know what I mean? We're taking this thing step by step. But if you use the YouTube, I mean, the, I mean the Instagram, the uh, and, and the Facebook, you're gonna get at me. You can DM me, and I'm gonna holler back at you. I mean, we, we're taking off. I mean, we did. We started Wise Word Wednesdays back in 2017. We had no idea that other people would even do it. We had no idea. We were just like, hey, bro, let's just give some positivity out there once a week. You know what I mean? You could, you could be as ratchet as you want to Thursday through Sunday, uh, you know, say or Thursday through, through Tuesday. But just one day a week, just give some positive information and, and, and it's just taken off, man. And I'm blessed. So I'll go ahead and, and type it in the chat for you as well. Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, and then I, how we want to wrap this up, Devon? You want to go first or you want me to go? Uh, I would love for you to go that way. You know, you're not rushed. I can rush the, the ending real quick uh, as a little wrap up. But I want to make sure you get to take your time and go through your amazing venture as well, Dr. Banks. Appreciate you facilitating as well. Did an amazing job. Uh, not a problem. Not a problem. Real quick, just as an individual and in my, my full-time and part-time jobs, what I do is I work with 
<laughs> Sorry, y'all. I live in uh, downtown Long Beach. It's kind of loud down here sometimes. But um, I work for the Amoja Community Education Foundation in California, uh, which is an organization that's really designed to help instill uh, the historical value of our people into community college students. And the philosophy is that if we know the, the strength that we come from as a people, then we can more successfully navigate you know, higher education, whether it be in community college or at the four-year institute. Walk in that talk. Um, so, you know, having some assessment and evaluation uh, entities that we go out and work with, whether it be corporate or nonprofit or even the two year or four year educational systems, to kind of hold them accountable for what they're saying that they're trying to implement on, on their respective campuses. Um, and in addition to that, you know, we do different workshops and different, you know, guest speaking and things like that. And so uh, we can be reached at 3BD Consulting. Um, and then I could be reached at Dr. Banks at 3BDConsulting.com and I'll, I'll drop those in the chat. But if you ever want to connect and just talk about, you know, the success of black students in higher education in any way, shape or form, I'm always around. So just hit me. Love it. Love it. We can give the, the panelists, the facilitators, everybody a round of applause, some energy. That was love. So every, every week so far, you know, we tried to, to keep it to an hour and a half. It hasn't worked so far because there's this, there, <laughs> there's this too much brilliance in there that the conversations keep going and it doesn't really feel natural, you know, to cut people off and really stop it. Um, there were a few other questions, you know, we wanted to, to get to, but this was an, an amazing, I think, panel discussion. Uh, this is recorded and it will be on our IMI Foundation website so we can go back, re-record it. You can send it to, to other folks that weren't able to be in this space. Um, but before I officially close out, definitely want to say a huge thank you to, to Rachel, Josiah, and Dr. Banks for contributing your brilliance, your wisdom. You know, y'all didn't agree on everything and I think that was perfect. Like I love hearing the, the different perspectives for sure. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, to to everyone that was listening, thank y'all for tuning in and joining. And Miss Nikki, thank you for hopping in. You know, for that for that one to represent, hold it down for the homeschooling community. So we're just gonna do a few slides to to close us out, and then we can go about our our amazing Saturdays. Oh, oh, there we go. So again, next week. We are going to focus on black wealth building, which we talked a little bit about as a, as a gap in education today, whether it's a gap for our, our youth or, or a gap for some of our, uh, you know, our, our grown folks out there. You know, we definitely need to make sure everyone is learning. Yeah, shout out to the young queen on here as well. Everyone is out here learning um, about building wealth. So that's going to be led by Star Melanson from She Building Her. She's a financial strategist and consultant. She focuses on helping Black women create financial independence and investments, but a lot of her strategies can definitely be used for all of the community. Um, and then we're going to end it with Black Love, talking about the importance of loving ourselves, loving our loved ones, and of course, you know, finding that, that loved one as well. Um, powered by IMI, so you can be able to go on June BFF bfm.com to get more updates. We have a live kind of stream of the hashtag wise words Wednesday. So as people post automatically, they'll get put on the, the website as well. So you see Josiah on there, you see Derek on there, you see some more folks on there as well. Um, and then if you want to learn more about IMI, you can go to imifoundation.com, free courses, paid courses, and these recordings will remain free for everyone indefinitely or until the internet breaks, whichever happens first, all right? <laughs> all right, well, that is it. Appreciate y'all. Thank you again. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, and I'll definitely be seeing some of y'all soon.